Well, hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're taking a look at the Amtrak P42 in Atherin Genesis form. Now, Atherin's recently released these. It's been quite a while, though, and I haven't gotten to the review, so we're going to do something a little different that I'll get into later. In previous forms, these P42s or other P42s were released through Atherin ready to roll. So, a lot more detail. Genesis line, that means Tsunami 2... Uh, that's that Genesis drive that's very smooth so we'll get into the review but then we're going to compare it to the Kato P42 and we'll go over some differences and I'll actually determine which locomotive I prefer at the end of this video there's not going to be any uh, you know ties or anything like that we're going to go over which I actually prefer so let's get into it starting next Now I think this is the second video in a row I didn't do my unboxing bit, but here is the box. It's Tsunami 2. It's got the graphics on the end, LEDs, and it's just the regular Atherin Genesis box. You've seen me unbox them a thousand times, and I was playing with these guys a little earlier, so a lot of them came out of the box, and then I just started taking them all out of the box. So again, this is very late to the game in the review. I had these when they were released, but I was in the middle of my move, so could not really focus in on doing any reviews at that time and still don't have an active layout until fall of this year. All right, yes, this review is very late, but we're going to do a Cato versus Atherin, which is a little bonus. And you're probably going to see other releases of these because this release was so limited in the quantity, they were hard to find. They were hard to find and sold out instantly. And I think there were some production concerns or issues that may have limited the production, so I'm sure you'll see another one. That's just speculation, but I'm guessing. So up front, you see windshield wipers that are thin metal applied. You got the bolt nose here, dual headlights, all the accessory hoses, which are on Genesis with silver tipped ends, and the brake line and airline hoses, or airline hoses, I should say. Coupler cut lever, McHenry coupler with magnetic trip pin. Not the best couplers uh, for long haul trains, but they do seem to hold their own. As we turn the locomotive dead on, you can see the Amtrak logo on the nose as well. And then the antenna array, which is in a PTC configuration. So that's the most modern version of this locomotive. Now this is phase five Amtrak. I've got a whole fleet of them behind me that I'm going to show you here shortly. And we'll put those on side by side, but this is what we're going to go over for the details. Handrails for crew entry into the door. You see the door with um, basically molded into the body there. There is a cab interior. You're not going to be able to catch that on camera. Really detailed trucks and ladders. Now on the ready to roll, these popped right off. These have been pretty good and stayed on this locomotive through transit and through some handling without any issues. You also see a light bit of weather, weathering that Atherin rarely gets credit for on these grills here. I believe this will be the dynamic brake fan area. I'm not sure but because I don't see an output on the fan, but I know in the rear there is a, uh, a radiator fan that I'll show you as well. But there's just a light bit of weathering there. Um, there's a little bit of packaging on these too. I'm trying to make sure not to uh, mistake that for paint. Speaking of paint, uh, paint lines here could be a little sharper and crisper. There's a little bit of fuzziness to the brake between the silver and the blue, but not terribly bad. Nothing to be too concerned about unless you're, you know, really a magnifying glass type modeler. On the back, you see number five, the radiator fan area, and you see this exhaust. I could not uh, really find photos online that say the uh, the P42s had this white area around the exhaust out of the factory. It's all blackened, obviously, from pretty much every picture we've seen, so I can't verify that that's correct. But everything else in terms of configuration on the roof is pretty much correct. There's even uh, molded in uh, latches here, or possibly lift rings or lift bolts or lift uh, triangular latches, and a lot of other molded in detail. Then you have the radiator fan in the back that does have a three-dimensional look. You can see the fan blades and then the fan grill instead of the old sticker they put on stuff. Uh, not necessarily P42s, but just things they've done in the past with stickers instead of the actual fan. In the back, you can see the crew entry compartment door and the handrails for that. Now that's access to radiator fan area and more of the interior engine parts. You've also got access in the rear now on an Amtrak train. 
You can sometimes have a transitional car superliner that has the low diaphragm here, and then on the other end it'll have the higher diaphragm so that there's access to the second floor of the superliner, or baggage cars typically trail uh, these P42s as well, and sometimes there's access directly to those. On the other side, more of the same. A little more zoom in. I want you to see the paint line um, and stuff like that for yourself. This is pretty much going to be any P42 uh, release from Atherin from now on. This review should pretty much cover, but I won't guarantee I won't do a re-review. I'm just trying to limit those a little more. That is uh, emergency fuel shutoff, I believe. Or, uh, yeah, so fuel shutoff, really good access there. And then you got an air dryer down here. Uh, on the lower side, that's probably a little harder to see or maybe out of frame, eh, about right there. So all of that and the nice truck detail, I think it shows a pretty good uh, detailed job on this locomotive. And I'll just tell you off the bat, without even looking at the P42, that this is going to win the detail category of the competition between the Cato and the Atherin P42. So those are... Uh, Basically, the details of the locomotive, a 360, I will show you bottom detail because, well, you know, there's detail down there too. There's some plumbing and air, air uh, reservoirs and there's battery box boxes and uh, compartments and stuff down there. So you can see the detail there and it really kind of pops up here. So it's really to showing you that this is a, a good Genesis locomotive. So in the end we have as delivered phase three. And then in the center we have phase two, the heritage locomotives. Now you see there's 66 and 130 here. And I'll tell you the difference and, and what happened be behind those because there's two heritages in the same scheme. Well, 66 came out first and it got in a wreck. So they repainted uh, 130 to that scheme to be the new heritage in the uh, in the phase two. So on the side here, I'm gonna turn this to the side so you can see a little better. These are all sound locomotives and we'll run just one of them really. Um, we'll run the phase five. So uh, sorry for all the fans of the other phases here, but these are the uh, 40th anniversary um, Amtrak locos. These were also released and ready to roll. This is obviously going to be the same as this, and you've already seen phase five. It's just different road numbers. So, with that said, uh, you also have the PTC antenna arrays that you can see up top. Uh, there is a difference between the original 66, which had a, a, a Sinclair antenna stand, where the 130 does not, and it's just straight on the roof there, and that's accurate for what's going on with those. I'll try to zoom in a little bit so you can see the difference there. All right, so as you can see, there's that little rift right there. That's that black. It's hard to see, but it's the stand for that antenna versus directly on the roof here. All right, so here is the... I decided to go ahead and give you guys uh, a heritage unit. So we're going to go ahead and fire that up. Sorry, there's a lot of functions already engaged on here, so trying to get all those squared away. I think we're going to go ahead and try to turn down the lights so you can see the headlights here a little better. Those are pretty golden white, golden yellow uh, LED lights there. We'll listen to bell and horn. These are straight out of the box, no adjustments. turn on the uh, ditch lights there they weren't on but they oscillate real good uh, flash rate on these overall so it's not bad at all all right we're gonna check slow speed control a little lurch out of step one which is kind of a surprise out of Genesis 
But it's clear on step through two and definitely on step three. And check forward motion. Again, slight lurch on one. Two is a little better and almost lurch free. And three is clear of lurch. All right, going through the AccuTrack 2 speedometer at one speed step to see what kind of accuracy we have on scale miles per hour. It's like 1.4. So pretty good uh, accuracy on that scale speed step. Oops. I don't know how well you can see this, but uh, we're pulling at skidding at 3.5 ounces it's about 45 let's see about 52 cars or so you know plenty to pull a super liner set um, or even um, the regular am fleets here's the Cato unit I want you to listen to just the bell and horn real quick Now the bell and the horn actually auto trigger together when you hit the horn. Personally, uh, I believe the Kato has better sound. Um, with that said, let's do a head to head look just real quick. Slow speed control. Slightly off track maybe. Now it's a little more lurchy at slow speeds. It's slow, it smooths out at about three. Love that brake squeal. It just moves, it crawls at slow speeds. So, you know, Kato has its own, but let's go to the turntable to really do a quick head to head. So the bolted nose is something that's changed on P42s due to being smashed in grade crossing incidents. But anywho, here is the Cato and the Atherogenesis side by side. Now, the thing about it is the Cato has less detail. It's immediately noticeable, and it's just a fact. Uh, the antennas are colored in with the roof. I don't know if that's accurate. Uh, there's less detail on the radiator fan grills, less detail all around. It's just how it is. Um, there's no tinted windows. There's a very... Uh, light colored in cab interior. There's no accessory hoses that you can see on the front of the Kato versus Athern. There is um, just way less detail. I don't know how else to put it. Uh, very blunt here. But uh, the Kato uh, and the Athern are head to head in a couple different areas. They are smooth drives on both of them. They had similar performances. Uh, they had uh, a lot of uh, similar operations with their drives. Uh, headlights, Cato has got a light piping going in to where these won't oscillate, so that's inaccurate. These do. Um, I do prefer ESU sound in this uh, P42. I don't always prefer, prefer ESU sound. I've heard some really great tsunami. I'm sure this can be tweaked, um, but right now out of these P42s, if I could, I'd take the Atherin version probably um, DCC ready and throw in a ESU decoder if I were picking the perfect model essentially. There's no you know, uh, wind deflectors on here, there's no windshield wipers. I could go on and on about how this Kato is basic, but a very good model for its time. And this is a brand new tooling, I believe. This is several year old tooling, so you have to keep that in, fact, in context. But my winner for the overall P42 would be Atherin, if I had to pick one model, even though I really, really love the sound of the Kato, I'd pick the Atherin for the detail, but I'd do a DCC ready, even though these are all uh, DCC and sound, and I would probably put an ESU Loc sound decoder in it. All right, with that said, let's wrap this review up. So you may have noticed a little more information than most of my reviews. That's because somebody was feeding it to me. This is Sterling 
from the Ravenhawk 6910 channel. Be sure to check him out on YouTube. I'll put a link below in the description. But Sterling is going to do my recap. Tell me anything he saw that uh, the differences and if I if he disagrees with me between the models or any other quick very quick tidbits uh, <laughs> on the thing because we have a dying camera battery right now but well first of all the... thank you for having me yeah no problem now we're looking at the models here I've got the Athern to the right and the Cato to the left what are your thoughts on the model differences and the overall uh, execution of both models just in maybe a real 30 minute 30 second or one minute recap man well personally and this is just me i think the detail on the atherin is far superior obviously because it's a new tooling i think the kato drive might be a little on the smoother side maybe i'm just old school like that i like the kato drive personally however the horn on the atherin definitely is more accurate to an amtrak k5la and i've been around p42s a good chunk of my life on the atherin on the atherin okay Yes, right. yes, the so horn just, is better on the Atherin. Just aesthetically, I, I hear the ESU sounds better, but you think it's more accurate on the Atherin. Yeah, it's okay. the sound. The ESU sound is better, mm -hmm. but the sound file for the horn in the soundtracks file is, is correct. Is more correct. Is, is more correct, yeah. Okay. The Kato is good, too. Don't yep. get me wrong. No, but I was just, I just wondering, because I'm... I, you know, I don't have... I wish I had the time, especially with a new job, to go listen to the... the uh, horns again and pay attention to that so that's a great point so really that gives another point to tsunami too on the sound but go ahead but no I, th I think i think what you said is good the esu sound would be a little bit better uh the kato one is good for its time and the atherin one has better detail you know there's no bolt-on nose on the kato there's no separately applied windshield wipers but the kato is still a great model if you can find one but the genesis one is really great for a modern diesel Correct, and you can check out the Kato review. I don't remember the NMRA compliance piece. I don't know if we have that little gauge sitting around here somewhere, but I know uh, I just had it a moment ago, and the P42s earlier were accurate. So, um, yeah, that's the wrong gauge. I have it somewhere. But anyway, the P42s on the Athern were accurate. The Kato's look a little high. I could probably just compare the two. They're pretty close, but, you know, you can look at the Kato P42 review back a few years ago or several years ago. Um, to see all the details that I couldn't really provide here. So thanks, Sterling, for putting in your two cents. Got any other quick tidbits or? Uh, no. Um, right. Thanks for having me. Thanks yep. for having me along for this little video. And and if you guys have a chance, come check me out at Ravenhawk sixty nine ten. Always appreciate any support and viewership. Mm -hmm. So and thanks he's both O scale and he's getting an HO more too. So uh, that'll wrap it up, guys. You know, this is an Amtrak expert. He was feeding me information throughout the whole review, which is great because uh, I was, you know, I did not do my studying on this one. <laughs> As I don't a lot of times, I just fly by night. But, um, you know, you can pick up either one of these. Look for more announcements from Atherin probably in the future for P42s is my guess. And we'll see you next time right here on the channel. Take care. If you're looking for any of the great products in this video, check out your favorite retailer or shop online at trainworld.com. Trainworld has a robust supply of products to fit your modeling needs.